Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's Golden Wind Geek Out. I'm your host, Danny. Got my cohort, Ryan, with me. Hello, everybody. And we're here to talk about episode six, Moody Jazz's counterattack, or just Moody Blues. Like, I know Moody Jazz is the name change, but again, I'm used to Moody Blues. So suffice it to say, yeah, we're just, I'm just sticking with Moody Blues. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so as I, as I like to call it, as I like to call this episode, the big tease episode. <laughs> God, yeah, it's like okay, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to cue the clip here just so people can have some fucking context. <gasps> oh my God, this is new. Oh, I'd ha wait, so, so wait, so they're actually showing up how Abakio got recruited? Yeah, apparently. Oh, God damn it! Oh, God. <laughs> well, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> you don't fucking tease me like this! It's like, damn it, production! Do you know not to tease a lady? <laughs> it's like, you don't bring in, you do not add to the backstory, and bring my Bruno into it, and not fucking deliver! Alrighty, so with that said, um, first major difference in this episode is that we actually got Abakio's backstory, whereas in the manga, you don't get Abakio's backstory for like another like three fights. Like it's when they're fighting Man in the Mirror is when we get Abakio's backstory. So they moved it up. That was also something else that threw me off guard as well, because it's like... Like when Danny was showing me the initial manga, it's like I I've I'm still waiting for like the next backstory, you know, to come up would be for a uh, Narancha, because yeah. because of course because of course that was how it was in the manga, but then it's like oh oh god, we're, okay it's like uh, okay, I totally get it I totally get why they would put a Bakio's uh, backstory like this early. As opposed to how it was in the original manga, if only because it's like okay, last episode, you know, before before show the to be continued sign or whatever, we were about to see Abakio bring out Moody Blues. So, you know, before we saw Abakio in action, that's when they were like, okay, now is a good now would be a good time to you know bring in his backstory and all of this. I get that. I'm not complaining. It was it just again. It was just something that threw me and Danny off guard. But it's because of that, Danny and I, or mostly Danny in this case, we respect. We've been speculating that if they're bringing in Abakio's backstory this early, they may end up making another change, another possible change in this anime adaptation. Yeah. Okay. So um. Okay, so, um, spoiler tag for you people that are only watching the anime and have not read the manga, go! So, yeah, it didn't hit me until we were, like, halfway through Abakio's backstory here. I was like, oh my god, I think I might have realized why the hell they moved it up so soon. And I think it's suffice to say, anybody who's read the manga, you guys probably realize this too. But in the manga, yeah, we got everybody's backstories fleshed out except for Fugo. And there was a reason why we didn't have Fugo's backstory. Because 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 Fugo pussied out like a bitch. So it's like who gives a shit? Well, not only that, I think I, I think I might have told you this when we were doing our um initial manga reading, Ryan, was that uh Araki's original plan for Fugo was that Fugo was basically going to like betray Bruno and all of them and like reveal that he was really a double agent for the boss all along. And then Giorno, given the fact that he's the only one that had immunity to the purple haze virus, he would have he would be forced to kill Fugo in order to save everybody else. But Araki at the time was going through like some depression or something like he was going through some really weird and dark personal issues, and ultimately he just couldn't bear to go through with the original plan, even though he had already kind of like you know set the building blocks in motion for it. So, 
what he ended up doing was he ended up rewriting that scene so that instead of Fugo betraying by, you know, trying to murder everybody, it, he rewrote the scene so that Bruno gives everybody a choice saying, you know, hey, I'm defecting, Giorno's coming with me, if you want to come with us, then get on the boat, otherwise, you know, stay and we're just going to part ways from here. And that was when everybody except for Fugo joined up with Bruno. So the whole reason I'm bringing that up was because, yeah, during the man in the mirror fight, you just get like the bare bones of Fugo's backstory. Like Eluso literally like whips out a folder and just gives us an abridged version of Fugo's backstory. It never got fleshed out or illustrated in the manga like with everybody else. So I was like, okay, I guess we're not meant to sympathize with Fugo whatsoever. That's why he didn't get a pretty backstory. (laughs) But whereas um, that's actually one of the things that the novel Purple Haze Feedback actually goes and rectifies. It actually does, uh, like Koei Kodono actually does in Purple Haze Feedback uh, what David Production is doing with the anime now. is like, we take what Araki already put down, but we're going to flesh it out even more. So I don't know. I I would like if David Production would refer to Purple Haze feedback for the backstory, because the backstory that Kohei Kodono made for Fugo, I really liked. But I have no idea. But suffice it to say, you know, long freaking rant aside, yeah, it's like, if they're moving Abakio's backstory from the man in the mirror fight to the soft machine fight, that that can that to me that just screams okay they're they're opening the window so when we get to uh, man in the mirror that's when David production is actually going to give us a backstory for Fugo now whether or not they're gonna refer to purple haze feedback we'll have we'll just have to wait and see I would certainly like it if they would but again I'm I, it's up in the air at this point so I don't really know. You know, whether or not they're actually going to go through with it, or did Araki come up with something different and say, okay, the video production, go with this instead? You know, I just have a, I just have a sneaking suspicion that that's why we got Abakio's backstory so goddamn early, is because they're going to save uh, Man in the Mirror for Fugo's backstory. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like, yeah, it, it would make a... I mean, yeah, it it's still really hard to say, like, if... There is going to be something along those lines happening, like, you know, once we get to the man in the mirror fight. But when you really get down to it, if if David Production and, and uh, Araki, you know, do decide to take that direction with Fugo's backstory, it still, to me, makes sense. Because it's, because it's like, with this episode, like, that, near the end of episode 5, like I said, you know, Abakio was about to show out Moody Blues. The episode ends, and then we start off with Abakio's backstory before we resume to the action that is Abakio showing our moody blues. And now it's like, oh, okay, we'll have the mirror, the man in the mirror fight coming up, which, uh, which of course is a fight that you know is has is like heavily involved with uh, Fugo's purple haze stand. So it so in th- so in that case, it's like. If they if they end up like um uh, ending an episode like with the man in the mirror fight you know like just on the verge of starting, only for the next episode to you know begin with like a fleshed out Fugo's backstory. It's like it it would make sense like if they were to take that direction with it. Yeah, yeah. But um, okay. I think uh, enough of talking about uh Fugo right now. Let's actually focus on Abakio because this was Abakio's episode. Yeah. Fugo. Yeah. Yeah, Fugo's yeah, episode's yeah. coming way later. So yeah, let's yeah, yeah, focus yeah. On Abak- Abak- yeah, Abakio's way more important right now. Okay, all right. So yeah, we'll, we'll let's we'll ha- we'll have Fugo take a seat. Yeah. So as far as Abakio's backstory goes, uh, for the most part, it's pretty much the same as in the manga. You know, they do illustrate some things like when you know in the manga they said that you know of the various contradictions that Abakio learned on the job was like, you know, the people that he's supposed to protect, well, look at how they're treating, you know, how they treat the cops. They throw rocks at their cars. They're just committing crimes and everything. And it's like, I mean, that was all in the manga too, but you know, of course, David Productions actually doing, you know, show don't tell. So a lot of it is just mostly, you know, that kind of a fleshing out. There are two things that I at least noticed that were different. 
Uh, one thing, in the manga, it looked like um, the scene when Abaku and his partner were going after, uh, they heard that there was a robbery going on, and then they, they go, arrive on the scene, and it turns out it was the pimp that uh, Abakio had taken the bribe from. In the manga, it looked like he was just, like, robbing a house or something. But in the manga, they said, oh, he was robbing a store. And they made a point of that because you actually see, I guess, uh, whoever the clerk was behind the counter, just, you, know, you just see him slumped over, shot in the head. And, you know, that actually explains why the pimp had the gun in the first place. Because, again, in the manga... You know, I guess it was just assumed, like, he just, he just, you know, given, you know, the fact that he just deals with prostitution and everything, of course he's going to keep him, he's going to keep himself, you know, armed. But, you know, it's just, in the manga, he just grabs his gun out of nowhere, like, from his back pocket. It's like, oh, he had this gun on him. Uh, okay, what the fuck? Yeah. But here, it actually makes sense why he has the gun. He was using the gun to rob the store. So I was like, okay, that was a nice little clarification there. I mean, it, it was a very minor change, but it was one that, you know, ultimately made sense. But the one that surprised me and Ryan was apparently they, uh, David Production decided to add an extra little scene of Bruno recruiting Abakio. Because that was not in the manga. The flashback ends where you see his partner getting shot. And then they go and explain how, you know, Abakio's future ended that night. He was formally discharged. You know, he fell into despair until he ended up joining Passione. That was pretty much the end of Abakio's backstory. So they decided to extend it by showing off Bruno recruiting Abakio. Oh, Scott. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, that's right. It's like <laughs> we see we see a Greek, we see a brief glimpse of some exclusive content for the anime where with with Bruno so just on the verge of recruiting a Bakio. And then the, and then we get the intro. It's like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, really? Why? <laughs> It's like, okay, okay, no, 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 clearly all you need to know is that uh, Bruno meets up with Abakio just out of the blue by an off chance, and, he was, and that's all you need to know. So, all right, anyway, begin with the episode. <laughs> it's like... Now, a neat thing that they did with this episode, and, you know, I know they've dabbled a little bit in, of this, like, in previous seasons, but, again, it's been a very rare thing. But, um, after the credits, they actually extended this scene so it's like after you hear freaking you it goes back to this scene where uh bruno is saying you know don't be held down by your past you know come join me you know blah. it's like what's really important is you know blah. i'm trying to remember what the words were exactly but pretty much it's massive foreshadowing <laughs> that's really what this is but it's like um you know, yeah, we see this scene, and I mean, that one took me completely off guard, because it's like, because I think, again, I'm thinking back to Purple Haze feedback, because Purple Haze feedback does actually show Abakio's recruitment, but it was not by Bruno, it was by Fugo. Wait. Yeah, so in Purple Haze feedback, uh, what happened was, um, I guess, like, this must have been, like, right after that whole bit where, you know, yeah, like, where the pimp sh shot and killed his partner and everything, and he's, you know, now been formally discharged and stuff. You know, Fugo's trying to find, I guess, information, and I can only assume maybe it was on that guy, or maybe on, like, a previous person that Abakio may have had encounters with, you know, while he was a cop. He was trying to get some information on somebody that was uh, pretty much, uh, you know, just flat out just killed, you know, executed, you know, like Pashione style, basically. He's just trying to get information. And Abakio was one of the last pe people that was in contact with this person. So he was originally questioning Abakio for information. But Abakio started making comments and asking questions like, you know, how is it that, you know, he's like, okay, how is it that you're able to do all this and not, like, feel anything? You know, basically he's saying... It, this was basically Abakio start, basically turned the interrogation around and basically said, tell me how to join Pashione. So it's like, in a, it's like Fugo had no intention of grabbing Abakio for recruitment, but that's kind of what happened. 
Now, that was how Purple Haze Feedback chose to go through with it. But the anime decided, nope, we're, it's going to be Bruno. And honestly, between the two, I prefer the way the anime handled it. Because, like, as far as backstories go, we know, at least, we know Narancha and Mista's backstories. We know Bruno had a hand in both of them uh, joining Passione. So I, it would not be surprising in the slightest if it was Bruno who approached Abakio. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, like, because, like, between the two, it's like, yeah, it's kind of weird that it was Fugo that did it in Purple Haze Feedback. It makes, it just makes a lot more sense that if it was Bruno that did it, considering how much everybody looks up to Bruno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's how, you know, Bruno is, of course, the leader. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, very nice. So, yeah, very nice scene. And, okay, just speaking as somebody who, like, just from reading the manga and everything, don't get me wrong, I liked Abakio, but he's not one of my absolute favorite characters. Like, really, if I was to rank, like, the main, like, group of characters, Abakio's probably closer to the bottom. I don't know, maybe it's just from seeing his seeing his backstory being animated with the voice acting and the music, like, just the overall production... I feel so much more for Abakio right now. It's like, oh my god, I, I want to give this guy a hug. <laughs> I get, I get punched in the throat afterwards, but god damn it, it'd be worth it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, this poor bastard. It's like somebody give him a hug and maybe a cupcake, please, or, or something. It's, it's like my, it's like my god. It's like briefly going into like a, the voice performance with, um, with Abakio. It's like. Obviously, we got to hear more of like how Abakio sounded with his with his relatively deep voice, which is a voice I honestly was not expecting for the character. I mean, especially during our initial manga reading, I thought yeah, like you, yeah, like uh, yeah, yeah, you gave him like yeah, what kind of vo yeah, I, I don't know how to describe the kind of voice that you gave him. Uh, let's see. Um. Um, based on, um, like, based on his character design, it's like, I kind of gave him, like, a, a bit of more of a kind of, like, a raspy voice in a way. Um. Yeah. Let's see, what, what's a good example? It's like, um, it's like, uh, <laughs> I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a bullshit line or something, or something. It's like, oh, shit, my mind went blank. God damn it. <laughs> Go, go go pull up go pull up a manga chapter and read a line or 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 better actually better yet I'll throw in a clip from the manga project. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. The power of editing. Oh, there we go. Sneak peek. What are you doing? Hurry up and run! It's coming closer. Run? That annoying little Giorno Giovanna told me to solve the mystery. Arrogant little brat. Yeah, I'll solve it. There's another layer to this bastard's mystery, and I'm starting to understand it. I'll finally unravel it and kill this bastard. Oh no, the Kraken! No! But I mean, I don't know, like, Ryan, like, I mean, after seeing Abakio's backstory, I mean, it's like, did you have the same feeling I was where I was just like, oh my god, I feel so much for this poor oh, guy? Oh god, I did. Like, no, like, like no, my, my, like, my okay, heart, it's my like, fucking heart. Yeah, really. It's like no joke. It's like when we get to the moment when when Abakio's partner like dives to you know catch the bullet on top of shooting the crook like at the same time, and then we hear the narrator go on about like what happened like after the shootout with with Abakio's partner and the crook, we get that massive painful cry from Abakio. I mean, it's like granted we don't get a shot of Abakio's you know face it like 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 distraught by what happened or whatever but it's like you could tell just from the voice alone that he was in pain and he and he felt up and he was ashamed of himself for letting it happen because he messed up i swear i swear to god it's like e again even though we didn't get a shot of a bakio you know doing that painful cry or whatever i on I, I was on the verge of getting some battle tendency vibes Oh, 
表の未来はそこで終わった I mean, like, yeah, like you could hear the man's soul fucking shattering in that scream. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it was, yeah, you know, you could tell it wasn't just like simple crying or whatever. It's like, no, yeah, there was like literal pain when he, when Abakio was crying like off screen. Yeah. It's like, ah,、uh, yeah, no, no, that's why I, I agree with Danny when she says、uh, the feels. The feels were real with Abakio there. I mean, whole, oh my God. Yeah, so it's like, I'm just curious, audience, you know, were you in the same boat as us? Whereas, like, you know, we just thought Abakio was okay, but now that we've seen his, no, seeing his history being presented, it's like, oh my God, I love you so much more now. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, I'm just, yeah, just chime in, audience. Just let us know. Did you feel the same way? Did you have the same feels? So, I guess with that said,、uh, pretty much, uh, Pretty much the rest of this episode pretty much kind of fell right into place, like beat for beat from the manga. You know, they do the whole bit where they're talking about, you know, they're watching the fly. <laughs> so it's like, it's by like, God, that fucking fly. Yeah, it's like, oh, God damn it, it's that same fly again. <laughs> yeah, so it's like they did the whole bit where they're watching the fly. And then we see Moody Blues. And I gotta say, I really liked what they were doing with Moody Blues. Like, Because they were actually pulling in like VCR sounds. Like you could actually hear, like, you know, like rewinding, fast forwarding, buttons clicking, like, you know, the sounds that play, like, you know, when you first insert like a video cassette into a VCR, like that sound. That's all shows up when Moody Blues is summoned. <laughs> I got to admit. That was a cool touch. Never would have thought of that. <laughs> oh my God. You listen to all the sounds Moody Blues makes, you know, with the VCR sound effects or whatever. Anybody feeling old yet? <laughs> Remember those VCRs, video cassettes, VHS tapes? I don't think the kids don't think the,、uh, I don't think the kids today know what the fuck we're talking about. God damn it. <laughs> It's like, I have a, a laser disc. You remember that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, I, yeah, don't you feel old now? w h a t it's like, it's like what I also really liked about it was like, um, as, um, as, um, Abakio and,、uh, Bruno were watching, like,、uh, the Moody Blues replay of, um, Narancha. It's like, whenever, he, whenever we saw, like, Narancha, like, you know, replay all of his actions, it's like, you could tell on, like, um, how fast or how slow Moody Blues was,、uh, doing the playthrough because of, like, not so much just how slow or fast,、uh, Narancha was moving, but also just by how,、uh, Narancha sounded, you know, as the replay, you know, played on. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because it was like,、uh, yeah, because like Abakio did a thing, like, you know, where he's saying, you know, okay, I'm going to fast forward and we're going to try and find, because they're trying to pinpoint when Naranto was attacked. So it's like, yeah, Naranto was in the middle of his little tirade about, you know, the boombox getting busted. That when Abakio said, you know, all right, I'm going to fast forward a little bit, he caught like the tail end of that rant. And you could faintly hear even like that little last bit of the rant start to speed up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like also, I guess,、um, yeah, good on you, David Production, for actually like, you know, staying, you know, paying attention to the little timer on your head. Cause it's like, that is, that's a detail that I would imagine would be so easy to miss. Like, that, I guess maybe that's just cause it's, Again, that's probably a thing like in modern anime that I've noticed more so is that, you know, people take the easy way out and they sometimes skip over or forget little minor details like this. So the fact that, you know, you're seeing the minutes, the seconds, even the milliseconds going down the entire time, I was like, all right, kudos to you, David Production, on that little detail. Because, I mean, I don't, it's like, Fuck, I'd notice it. I don't know how many other people would, but I know I'd notice if something like that was fucked up. Especially <laughs> when, you know, you can clearly see it, you know?、Uh, right, right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But, it's like, but, but, even, but even then, it's like, still, that's pretty damn impressive because even I didn't even notice that little attention to detail with the timer. Alrighty, so then,、um, yeah, so pretty much,、um, they pretty much continue forward with the soft machine fight. Actually, 
Okay, oh, so oh, yeah. Oh wait, uh, oh wait, machine, uh, wait. Yeah. Should, we, should we get should we slightly get into detail on how they dubbed a uh, soft machine's name in the anime adaptation? That's what I was just getting into. We had, so we were betting on what was I think like soft robot or something. So nope, they decided to go with tender machine. Yeah, that that works. I mean, I mean, it's like I mean, I guess tender is another variation of the word soft. So it's like not exactly what we were anticipating, but it's like hey, it works. Yeah, so I mean, it's like you know, synonym off of a word. We were just betting on the wrong word. Yeah, true. I mean, I mean, at least it's still in a way it still rolls off the tongue very well, as opposed to other names that we've ran into in past JoJo parts. Yeah. All right, so yeah, pretty much uh, from here on out, the rest of the fight just, yeah, like I said, just pretty much goes down like, you know, beat for beat, you know, exactly how it was in the manga. And, you know, and especially like, although it's like, it was funny in the manga, but it's also really funny in the anime, is Bruno versus the fly. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, seriously, we have a Mexican standoff against a fucking fly. Oh my god, I tell you what, it's, it always goes back to that goddamn fly. <laughs> Note to self, uh, next time we go on another one of these adventures, bring a goddamn fly swatter. Just bring a can of Raid. <laughs> bring both. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, you know, so yeah, so the stare down with the fly, that was pretty funny. And then it's like, you know, granted the entire time Bruno was wearing pink. And yet he still looked damn fine in it, so who am I to complain? <laughs> you you are not wrong. I, I, seriously, this man can wear anything and look fucking good. <laughs> it's just not fair! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alrighty. So then, you know, so then, uh, what's called, we get to the whole bit with the, the ship splitting. And, you know... I'm sure everybody who's read the manga, you've noticed this from even in the last episode. So, in the last episode, we saw, you know, when Bruno was, um, when they were renting out the ship, you know, the, what's you called? You saw that all the ships, they were uh, numbered. So, you know, Lagoon 1, Lagoon 2, Lagoon 3, and everything. So, the uh, according to the key that Bruno had gotten from, you know, the guy that, you know, runs that harbor... Uh, the ship that he rented was the Lagoon 1. But this entire time, it was the Lagoon 2. And that was all, that was just, that was all massive foreshadowing. Because, you know, what Zucchero did was he just took the Lagoon 2 and did, you know, hit, hit it with the soft machine and threw that over the Lagoon 1. And the manga, I'd have to double check this. I'm actually going to do that right now. Yeah, no, okay, so yeah, I just checked it and everything, so yeah, in the manga, the ships were not numbered, it was just the lagoon, so it's like, how the hell did we get a second identical ship involved in this fight, but, you know, so yeah, that was, that's a good clarification there on David Productions part, so it's not just, you know, oh, Zucchero just pulled this random boat out of his ass, to go pull off this whole, you know, thing. It was just, no, he literally, you know, he grabbed another identical boat because it was from a rental shop. Of course there's going to be identical boats. Right, okay, all right. But even then, it's like, god damn. Yeah, no, I agree. G good choice of clarification right there. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, because even I, I, even I have to admit, like, it was one of those things, like, you know, after we had eaten, well, after you went to go eat something, Ryan, I actually had to, actually went back in the anime and double-checked, because I actually didn't notice that the first time around. Where it was like, you know, oh, okay, you know, it was the Lagoon 2, and then when he rented the Lagoon 1, like, I, I was like, oh, really? You know, I actually went back to double-check to see, you know, oh, did they really, you know, was that, like, all, like, accurate and everything? And, yeah, it was. So I was like... God damn it! I think we were. I think I was. I think we were just so caught up on the fact that we're seeing like a brand new scene, and then the rancha is just loading up on snacks and being goofy as shit. We were so focused on that that we didn't even notice that the whole thing where Bruno rented the first ship and he's sailing the second ship didn't even notice that. 
God, it, it's, it's always just the little things in regards to, like, how much attention to detail, like, David Productions has been putting, like, within, like, uh, Ventor Rayo thus far. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I know, I feel so fucking dumb for having not noticed that. Because, I mean, it was like, it was painfully fucking obvious. But again, when you and me were watching it, we weren't paying that much attention because we were in the middle of geeking out over Naranja's derp face. <laughs> we, we were geeking out over Naranja's derp face. We were geeking out about on how much of a badass Abaki was with Moody Blues. And then how much of a badass Bruno was when he was taking down Tender Machine. Oh god, yeah, okay, yeah, it's like, okay, I know we made this joke uh, during the recording, but I am going to say it here, it's like, I know, it's like, yeah, uh, I want Bruno for Smash now. <laughs> yeah, like, after he decided to go fucking arms all up in here, it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, seriously, if you, yeah, no, seriously, if you were to see, uh, you know, Bruno, like, attacking uh, the uh, Tender Machines user or whatever, it's like, freaking, okay, no, it, it was, seems like he came out of arms, like, the way he, he, the way he unzipped his arm and just, like, threw it at, threw it out the guy, as if I'm he not, could spring his so goddamn arm like an arms character. <laughs> Well, his arm literally spiraled before he went and threw it. So it was like, <laughs> God damn it, man. Yeah, exactly. I know, it's like, it's like, yeah, people people are saying, you know, I know they're joking like half-heartedly and everything. It's like, oh, I want Goku for Smash. It's like, no, Goku can be the assist trophy. Bruno gets to be the fighter here. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Smash community. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Sorry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. So then, yeah, so that. So then we see that, you know, uh, uh, Zucaro gets his uh, head punched off. So then we see that, you know, okay, Abakio's all right, you know, get a nice little moment between the two. And I'm sure every fucking shipper out there just like fucking squeed right now. Oh, yeah, th oh this episode oh, had yeah. to have this episode had to have made the Abakio and Bruno shippers very happy. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it's like yeah, th I, yeah. This was definitely for them, but it's like um, and then yeah, we go into the credits, and then you know we get that extended uh the extended bit with uh, Abakio's history there. You know, as we mentioned before, but uh. Sad to say, we have to wait another week for the torture dance. And and this and this is why I emphasize that this was the tease episode, because 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 first it because first it teased Danny and myself when um they cut they cut off they cut off that bit where Bruno was just on the on the verge of recruiting a Bakio onto the team, you know, before they play the intro. And then they tease us, because here we are thinking, oh, okay, Tender Machine is done. Okay, that's great. Where's our torture dance? Nope, to be continued. Yeah, so Mother I think somebody should say, well, just watch. Next week, because they're going to do the bit where, you know, okay, we got to, uh, you know, they're trying to figure out, you know, okay, was he acting alone? Was there another one? Did he have a partner? So you have, like, you know, that that whole exchange. Just watch. The torture, they're going to do go do all that up to the torture dance, and then the opening credits. That's how it's going to be. The, the torture dance is going to, you know, be the prelude to the, to to the freaking credits. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, pr pretty much. But that, so with that being said, though, so next week... So now I'm curious because next week's fight. So next week is a miss is the first Mista fight that we have, and considering how we're literally starting the you know we're getting the fight from the like from the beginning in next week's episode. It's not like oh, okay here's the beginning of the fight for this week and then here's the remainder of the fight the following week, which is what they've been doing you know pretty much with all the fights up until now. So it's like. Now I'm real curious, because they said, um, because ne the next episode is part one. So we know that the, uh, the next fight is going to be two parts. So now it's like, okay, how far into the fight do you think they're going to go? Uh, honestly, I'm thinking 
at the most, probably like the first quarter of the fight. Okay, going from where we've left off right now in the anime. So, we gotta get Torture Dance. Yes. Uh, Giorno, Giorno and Mista have to hurry on ahead and try and track down this other guy, you know, before before Bruno and the, and the rest arrive at uh, Capri. And, you know, so that's where you get that whole standoff where they're waiting by the boathouse. They're trying to lure the guy, you know, into a trap to try and get him. But the trap, you know, pretty much fails. And that's when um, Mr. Mr. pretty much goes on ahead going after him. He sees, you know, there's a truck that looks like he, like, um, that this guy, that he snuck onto. And then pretty much that's where the fight begins is where it's on this like massive pickup truck going up a hill. Well, well, okay. Well, in that case, it's like it, it probably wouldn't make a whole lick of sense if they if they stopped like at like the first quarter of the fight. It's like, man, I don't know. It's like if they don't knock out that entire fight within the entirety of next episode, it's like now I'm thinking like probably like they'll probably stop at the halfway point at like at the fur at the far farthest or whatever. I'm. I'm thinking, um, because again, I'm I'm uh, checking the manga right now. I'm oh, okay. thinking, um, you know, because they have to do the setup and everything, so that we know the setup is going to take some time. Because th there's the torture dance on the boat. Then they got to get them off the boat. Then they got to try. They try to lure them into the trap. That doesn't work. We got to get Mister to the truck where the fight can actually begin properly. So there's going to be a lot of setup before the fight actually starts. So, I'm thinking probably where the episode will end. Because if you remember, Ryan, you know, the fight begins, like, you know, he, you see that, you know, he shoots the guy, uh, Saleh. He shoots Saleh in the leg when he's in the boathouse. And that's how he's trying to uh, find him and everything. And it's when he's on the truck, he goes and shoots Saleh. He sees Saleh uh, hiding on top of the truck, shoots him in the head. And then that's when you find out, oh, he's not dead, even though he took a bullet. I'm thinking like, and like, that's really like the first like time we actually see uh, Saleh, like not in shadows, but just, you know, you clearly see him. I'm thinking that's pro probably around that point is when we're going to actual is when the episode's going to end. It's going to be like, okay, let's bring him in. Let's begin the fight. It'll probably be where you think, oh, Mr. just shot him right between the eyes. That's going to take his ass down. And then you find out, nope, the guy's still alive. What the fuck? Find out next week. I'm thinking that's where it's going to go. Uh, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I could potentially see that too. Okay, just for funsies, pretty much like what we did with uh, Zucchero, I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview for the next stand fight. So I know we've been predicting stand names, and I know we've been way off, you know, like way off or slightly off and everything, but fuck it, I like predicting uh, stand name changes. So what do you think they're going to change craft work? Uh, uh, clockwork. Clockwork, okay. <laughs> God, I don't know. That's, that's literally the first thing that came to mind. It's like, I don't know how how you could get the word clock from craft in this case. I don't know. I'm just thinking Sly Cooper villains at this point. Yeah. I'm thinking they could just do something really simple. Like, maybe instead of craft work, maybe, like, just call it, like, crafting works or something. I mean, something relatively simple. Uh, I mean, it's like... You, yeah, like crafting work or like, or if you did have to change one word because the ability has to do with locking, then maybe it can be like crafting lock or lock work or something like something, something to have something having to do with locking. Hmm. So, so, something with locking. 
Um, oh, gee. Oh, man. I don't know. Like, pit locking. But it's like, you know, I'm, but yeah, I'm just thinking, like, they could just do it something simple as, like, instead of just doing, like, craft work, you could just go and, and, you know, make it like a present tense or something. Make it like crafting. Like, crafting. Like, crafting work or something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a, that's actually going to be a bit of a tricky one, considering how his initial name is laid out. But, no, oh, we will find all of that out next week. So, I'm trying to think, is there anything else um, that that you that we might have uh, missed? Um, on top of my head, no. Honestly, I think at this point we're good. Alrighty then. So, hope you guys enjoyed this backstory. Send all of your cupcakes to Abakio, please. The poor man needs it. And we will see you all next week for episode 7. Yes, tune in next week for less of the feels and more of the torture dance. Yes. And hopefully more sex pistols. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we got we got to bring in Ryan's spirit animal now. <laughs> yes, yes, and so yes. <laughs> I will see you guys next week. Yeah.